so all right, the process of making wine is that there's grapes and they crush the grapes, right? Yep. And then they have to let it sit for a long time. Um, anywhere from three to four months. They age it. Uh, macerating, letting it all come together in gel. Not so much age. Aging okay. is like usually a year, two year process. We don't okay. do that, so it's a little quicker than that. All right. You have your own farm or you just outsource it to like... So we have a winery partner. So there's a vineyard in the south of France in Central Pay that we work with exclusively. They produce their own label, primarily in France, and then we work with them to get a style of wine that we wanted for Lafette. So they, they make like gallons of wine. Yeah, like and then bottles they, a year. And then they ship it to you. Yeah. Is it... Is this proprietary to you, this taste, or do they? Well, everything in, in winemaking typically is blending process, right? And it changes every year because some years harvest is better than others. It's a very volatile <laughs> industry. Um, so you try to get a style of wine, and then you try to make that style every year. But it's never going to be exactly the same. It's impossible unless you're making it in a factory. So it, what, what makes wine so, like, one of the, like, I'm not a wine connoisseur, but, like, LeBron, and yeah, yeah. They, they have, like, wine cellars, and it's, like, some bottles worth, like, a $50,000. Yeah. Like, what makes wine high class? What makes some wine better than other wines? Like, how do you gauge that? Uh, so France is heavily re regulated in how they classify their vineyards and winery and terroir. So when you go to like Burgundy and Bordeaux, those are like premium, some of them are premium wineries, uh, small production, like how long do they age? How do they taste after they age? So all of that sort of thing adds into what puts the value to wine and scarcity. I mean, it's a commodity. So if you have a great vintage and they only produce a thousand bottles, 10 years from now, those thousand bottles could be worth $10,000 a bottle per se. So Sancho Bay comes up in a story. Yeah. Um, did you know that going in or is this like as you're traveling, doing the other brands, you're starting to see and you're learning from where mm -hmm. they're going and no. now. So how did, how did Central Pay come into the, 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 so, the mix? Puff had that line and I need a girl, right? Uh -huh. yeah, ever been to Central Pay? So I literally took that as the reason to go there for my birthday, right? <laughs> yeah, Crazy shit. Yeah, like yeah. never been, I'm going. Yeah. But when you go and during that era, that's when Puff and all of them were there every summer. So the energy again was crazy. It was just like, yo, this is the best place on earth. So whenever I had the chance to get back to France or Paris for work, I would beeline my way back down the South and it just became like my place. Um, so I fell in love with the place and mm -hmm. a part of that lifestyle in that place is Rosé wine. Yeah. So, all right. So you get the, the contract to get the wine from, from mm -hmm. France and then you put it in your bottles. Yep. You no, it's all bottled. Everything's bottled uh, for production. They label it for you and all that? Everything. All yeah. right. So where are you selling it? In stores or? Yeah. We, I mean, right now we're up to about a thousand points of distribution. But, but like we, when you first started? When I first started, literally four hotels in Miami. Four. You just hand to hand, like one. Yeah, yeah, I just went to everybody I had relationships with from you know years in the industry and yeah. said, "Yo, I got this rosé." And you know the good ones were like, "All right, we like you. We gonna we gonna give it a shot. It don't sell us on you, but we'll give it a shot." Did you tell them it was yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Sure. So how'd you get it to sell? I mean, Miami's a rosé culture, so it didn't take a lot, right? Oh. It was just like they you're just in took a chance with it. Yeah, you're in the W you hotel and just, said, and just go. I mean, one thing we did do that other people weren't doing is because we were produced in Central Pay, is we put that. You know how they list wine? It would say Lafette Rosé, Sancho Pay. So most people that were in and out of the W and the Satai hotels in Miami had been to Sancho Pay. So that was something that automatically their eyes were It drawn. resonated with them. It resonated with them, absolutely. A taste of the culture. Yeah. So Lafette, um, nice name. Yeah. I know what it means. Explain <laughs> why you uh, landed on that. Yeah, so Lafette du Rosé, the full formal name, means the Rosé party. And so for us, the tagline is a party and everyone's invited. Because typically in wine in general has been very... It's exclusive and not inclusive, right? So we wanted to create a brand that was definitely bringing everyone into it, right? Black, white, Chinese, gay, straight, whatever, it didn't matter. It was just like, yo, we like rosé. So it's more of a, a lifestyle play than mm -hmm. it is a wine play. Like we could have gone with the typical, you know, blah, 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 Chateau Vigny, you know, whatever. Like <laughs> that didn't resonate with any of us. We wanted a name that would definitely pop and then we could, you know, bring to life 